Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews, where today we're checking out a 2019 Leopard 51 Power Cat. At the time of shooting this video, this one was up for sale in Jacksonville, Florida, with our good friend at Mark Ziegler Yacht Sales, and the asking price was $1,035,000. There's plenty of room on board with this one. She measures in at 51 foot in length, but she's got a beam of just over 25 feet, and she's got a maximum draft of just over 3 feet. There's very few of these boats available on the market today and as you'll see this one's got an extremely high spec but she's also got less than 230 hours on the clock and only around 160 hours on the generator. She's got a high freeboard that helps keep every fuel safe and secure on board but I love how easy it is to board this one from the extended bathing platform and this extends out on both sides of the hull so it doesn't matter if you come alongside to port or starboard you'll still have easy access. And on the bathing platform itself, you see we've got that boarding ladder. That way, if you've been in swimming or diving, you get easy access to get on board. And as we step up, there's a large storage access area here. I'll show you the one on the other hull. Um, this one I couldn't get open because of the short power cables. And between the hulls, I like the fact that we've got this rigid inflatable tender. She's sitting on a hydraulic platform. That way you can raise it up and you don't have to worry about towing it when you're underway. But it's also very easy to launch and retrieve whenever you want to use it. And this one's got a Honda 4-stroke 25 horsepower outboard. And I love the layout that's on the aft cockpit of this one. There is plenty of seating here for your family and friends to relax on board. And it's all under shade and protection from that overhang that you have from the flybridge. And built into the roof of this, we've got recessed lights, we've also got plenty of stereos for the sound system, but we also have cameras in here that you can monitor it from the helm. And I mentioned whenever I boarded that there was a storage access, it's like having a large lazarette on either side. Down here would be a great place to store ropes and fenders and things like that. But from a more mechanical side of things, this also gives you great access if you ever need to inspect or repair any of the steering gear. And this basically has the same layout in both the port and starboard quarters. And as we make our way forward, notice a large square that's cut out on the deck. This yacht's only got less than 230 hours on the clock, so it's by no means an issue for today. But I love the fact that that's actually the access point to the starboard engine. There's one on the port side as well. But you can pop this off anytime you need to do any major upgrades, rebuilds or replacements when it comes to the engine, which is a great safety feature, I think, in long term. And as you walk around this yacht, you've got the high guard rail on the outside, plenty of handholds on the inside, and a very wide deck on its own, so you always feel like you've got plenty of room to manoeuvre. And as with most cats, this one has got the seats built into the bow. It's a great spot to relax, both while you're underway and also when you're at anchor. I just love how much deck space is on this one. There's so much room thanks to that beam. As I said, it's just over 25 feet beam. That's roughly double what you'd expect for a yacht of this size. Now while you may be expecting the aft cockpit to have a seating area, this one's also got a cockpit in the bow. As I make my way down into that cockpit, you'll see we've got plenty of seating here. We've got pop-up cockpit tables, there's drinks holders, there's more storage underneath the seats on the starboard side. We've got a TV mounted on the bulkhead for entertainment. And then over on the port side, you'll see we've got that fusion stereo system. And then on the deck you'll see we've got three sections here which will open up for you. I also want to point out this deck's got a non-slip material to it and it definitely works. You never feel your feet slide while you're walking around here. But if I open up this middle section you'll see that this one is equipped with an electric windlass and this can be operated here on the bow but it can also be operated from the helm. And then if I open the section on the port hull, again this is like having a forward lazarette. But this is where you're going to find a Northern Lights generator. As I mentioned, this has got around 160 hours on the clock. And you'll notice how clean and dry that generator is. It's virtually brand new. The entire yacht is virtually brand new. It's had so little use. And then if I open that storage section, which will be on the starboard hull, and this time you're going to see some of the tanks that we have on board. So for the entire yacht, you're looking at roughly 45 gallon holding tank. 207 gallon fresh water tank and roughly 400 gallons of fuel on board. The engines on board, they've got a great combination. You can reach speeds of around 25 knots and you've got a fast cruise of around 20 knots. But if you cut those throttles back to 7 knots, you're looking at around 1500 mile range. 
Now normally whenever I'm doing these videos I focus on the inside and then the flybridge but in this one I want to do it in reverse because I believe the flybridge is going to be the main focal point for this yacht. So again we've got plenty of seating out in this half cockpit, plenty of storage underneath the seats, stereo controls, large cockpit table to port and it always feels like there's a handhold within easy reach so if this was underway especially in heavy weather you're always going to feel like you've got something to grab onto. So getting up to the flybridge, I like how easy it is with these steps. It doesn't feel like you're climbing a ladder, which will make it far more accessible for all your family and friends. But check this out. When last did you see as much space up here for your family and friends to enjoy cruising with you while you're underway on the flybridge? And underneath most of the seats you see here, there's plenty of storage. The backrests have also got the option of folding down. You can have them forward face and rear face and you can turn them into sun pads. You get the benefit of this solid hardtop overhead, giving you shade and protection. And we've also got a grilling station up here as well. And we've even got a fridge up here, and that way you can have all your snacks and meals prepared on board without ever having to go back down. And then I also want to point out that there is actually canopy enclosures. I can show you the enclosure later on when we go downstairs. But this entire flybridge can be fully enclosed and that way you can pretty much cruise in any weather and not have to worry about wind and rain. And then for the helm, I like the fact there's as much space up here for more than one person. In my mind this would be perfect for husband and wife cruising. She is fully equipped with pretty much everything you could ever need. You, even this one's got bow thruster which you don't normally have on a cat. But we've got autopilot, we've got multifunction display, we've got speed log depth, VHF radio, full engine instrumentation and that multifunction display that's actually connected to several cameras on board so you can use it as a, almost like a backup camera in your car whenever you're coming to dock in at the marina and I also like the fact that from the helm you have got such great visibility whether that means while you're out at cruising or while you're doing your close quarter manoeuvres you've got an unobstructed view practically from the helm so despite this yacht being the size that it is, it still instills a lot of confidence that makes this a perfect choice for family cruising. Although this one's never been chartered, I also imagine this would be a great boat to enter into the charter market just because of how much space you have and how much comfort and luxury you have for your guests. And to an extent, if you look at the yacht next door, that's what the enclosure would look like for this one as well. So as we make our way down and step inside, there's a few first impressions. I love how much headroom there is. I'm six foot two and I don't have any issues at all. I love how much natural light there is from all the windows that we have, both on the side, but also at the bow and stern. And if you want to do a liveaboard cruising, this is the one for you. You got a fully equipped galley, you got a large saloon, and that table does drop down and become a double berth. And we've got a TV mounted on the bulkhead for entertainment. We've got a control panel for all your AC and DC controls. I was impressed with not only how detailed all the labelling is, but this is also illuminated. So whenever you come in here, it's easy to work out what to switch on and switch off. And below that, we do have refrigeration and ice as an option. We've got a split drawer fridge freezer. And there's just a ton of storage throughout. There's so many lockers, drawers, cabinets. There's even storage on the floor as well. This would be perfect for long range cruising and spend an extended period of time on board. And then we have this U-shaped seating area in the saloon. There's storage underneath most of the seats. You can also see those infill cushions on the side. This table does rotate and drop and it becomes a double berth as well. And this is an example of the storage that's in the deck. You could put canned goods in here, you've got canopy covers, you could do all sorts of things with different dry storage options. And this also gives you a close-up inspection of the materials used. Notice the gap lines that's on all these panels. It's just such a well-designed and built yacht. Definitely feels like you get what you paid for. So for the galley, we do have a double stainless steel sink. Again, there's tons of storage options. There's good countertop space. You've got a three-burner stove top, and then you've got the cooker oven underneath. And as I open some of these drawers and cabinets throughout, notice they've all got that push-button lock mechanism. That way if the boat's underway, you don't need to worry about anything opening and falling out. Now we do have a lower helm here. This would be a great navigation station to use. I also want to point out the owner's manual that's sitting. It's got all sorts of documentation regarding the operation, warranty, the different installs that's taking place on this yacht. 
and also like the fact you've got easy access to the bow cockpit area. Not only just so you can come in and out anytime you want to socialise with friends, grab refreshments or use the head, but it's also a great way to get out if you need to get to the bow in a hurry. Then if we make our way down the starboard hull, this is basically the owner's quarters. To begin with you've got plenty of storage, but you've also got an area that doubles up from being a desk if you want to use it for an office with a laptop and things like that, but you can also use this as a vanity station too. And even down in this hall, there's plenty of headroom. As I said, I'm six foot two and I don't have any issues walking around here. I also like how much natural light and ventilation is available. There's a number of opening hatches and portholes here. And that's both on the side of the hull, but also overhead as well. And speaking of overhead, I like the fact that they've got use of this space. We made overhead storage, as I say, throughout the entire yacht, anywhere you look, if you can fit a drawer, a cabinet, a locker, and they've done it just so that you've got all the space that you could ever need for extended liveaboard cruising. Now this is you pretty much making your way to the bow on the starboard hull. And you see here we've got what's been used for towels and linens. And then that's right next to the heads compartment for the owner's suite. And I like the fact that there's a separate compartment in here for the shower as to the toilet. And there's plenty of room in here where you can actually enjoy using that shower. And again, you can see this is a very bright and airy compartment. Plenty of natural light as well as artificial light. Plenty of ventilation if you need it. And as I make my way round to the aft cabin for the owner's stateroom, you can again see there's plenty of compartments on the deck. Not only do these double up as storage, but it also gives you access to the bilges should you ever need to. And as I make my way aft, you'll see there's a sliding door, so you can block up this basically entire hull, and that way you just make it into one large owner's suite. But once you make it into the aft cabin, you can see we've got a very, very large double berth. Again, there's plenty of storage in here. There's plenty of natural light. But it's actually underneath this berth that you're going to find a starboard engine. And this has got an electronic hatch with a push of a button, and this raises up. And underneath, you'll see we've got a Yanmar. This is an 8LV370. She's got approximately 370 horsepower. And as I mentioned earlier, she's got around 230 hours on the clock. And as you'd expect with such low hours, look at how clean this engine is. It looks like brand new. Even all the stickers are perfectly intact. Easy access to all your filters, your fuel and water separator. And look at how much insulation is in this. I doubt you'd even know the engine's running practically while it was going, even if you were laying on this bed. As I pan the camera around, there's multiple air conditioning units throughout the yacht. I believe there's three in total, but there's multiple for each section on board. And if I make my way across and go down the port hull, this yacht's got a three cabin layout. And this is me heading aft on the port hull. And again, as you'd expect, there's another engine underneath the bed here. It's all electronic access. Push of a button, this raises up. And again, you can see just how clean and well maintained those engines really are. Yanmar is also a good choice where it's normally easy to get engine spares as well as get technicians. So if you are looking at doing some extended cruising, you should always have resources available no matter where you go. And as well as having over the top access for the engine, on both the engines, the front compartment that you see here, you can also have access to as well. So if you need to do anything at the front of the engine, you've got the ability to do so. And again, this stateroom, you've got plenty of access to natural light and ventilation, both on the side of the hull and overhead. And the overhead hatches have got those blinds where you can have it shut off, but you can also have like a mesh screen so you can open the hatch and not have to worry about bugs or leaves or anything like that coming in. And this stateroom does have a large TV mounted on the bulkhead for entertainment. Plenty of storage lockers, drawers and cabinets. We've got the guest heads compartment and although it's smaller than the owner's suite, again it's still got a separate toilet and shower compartment which I think is always beneficial on a yacht. And I like the fact that there's much room in the shower where your guests can actually use it. Some of the yachts I've been on they might say they come with a guest shower but you can never actually use that. I also like the fact that there's as much quality, comfort and luxury for both your guests and the owner. And that way they can relax on board with you. And this is you basically making your way to the bow on the port hull. And again you've got another heads compartment. So you've got three cabins and three heads. And they all share a very similar design. 
and all finished to a very high standard. As I make my way into the cabin on the bow, you can see all the canopy covers that I had mentioned. This is where they're currently temporarily being stored. Now this cabin's got a little bit of a strange layout because it's got a double berth, but there's also a single berth forward of that, so there's actually three berths in here. There's storage underneath the beds themselves, and again there's plenty of storage throughout the cabin. And I'd like to thank Mark Ziegler for allowing me the opportunity to come on board, take a look at this one and share the video with you. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you haven't done so already, if you can please leave a comment down below. If you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.